Oh boy, it's time. We're gonna have to go upstairs though in order to head to Tartarus, but yep, once we get there, it is time for the final fated showdown. With a certain something that has been a thorn in our side for a long time. Let's go. This could potentially end very, very badly, but it could also go very well. I just want to check the inventory before I go in, because there's a certain item that I might want to be carrying. Also, though, I do want to give Akiko the evil gloves. So, let me just check your status. What level is he, actually? Oh, 69, that's fine. And you're at that level and you're getting Mara's weapon. Of course. So, yeah, here we go, plus 10. I don't know why this has 99 hit when Masakado's Katana has 100, but anyway, if you want to check out his stats now, they look pretty impressive. Yeah, he's still a long way off Marziodyne. And I'm actually going to be adding him to the party. Because really all I want here is strong physical attacks. And for that, I want my legendary weapon users, Akihiko and Junpei. Apart from that, hmm. Physical attacks are really the one thing that matters here. Although Koromaru's decent agility, he could do a pretty good job of potentially dodging things. Do I have anything better for him at all? Doesn't really look like it. Probably don't need the wizard's mark, though. Let's see what I can give him. Anything decent. Eye of Flame? Again, it's probably better to use Surt's hard item. The Berserker Seal's probably better. Anyway, you are going to be joining the party now. Did I buy... No, I think I waited because you can get better stuff in, um, well, you'll see. So, I've got this party currently. Now, I just want to check something quickly. Actually, I can safely get rid of the Deadly versus Hangman weapon now that I think about it, because I have a much better one-handed sword. There we go, we can equip that. Don't really need the Tome of the Void either. I'd much rather have the Sacrificial Idol. And also, I want to check something. I want to make sure that I... Oh, there's a lot of things to go through. Oh, I haven't sold the rainbow hair yet. Oh, actually, that sells for pretty much nothing. So, where is it? Where would it be? Ah, uh, no way, it's not the Treyasu gem. I don't have any Trafuri gems. That could actually be quite bad. It might be a good idea to have some of those because you actually need a very specific setup against the Reaper and failing to run from it is generally going to spell death. So this could end quite badly now that I think about it. One other thing. Before you go in, might want to make sure, yes, we have accepted the Retrieve One Bloody Button request. Because otherwise, the Reaper won't be dropping that. So... We're going to be heading into the first block. It's easiest that way. It's not often that we use the original entrance to Tartarus. So... Yes, we're ready. I actually didn't save, but I didn't really do a lot of stuff beforehand, so it's probably fine. Now, here is probably the most annoying part of doing this. We need to wait. It's pretty funny that whenever you don't want to see the Reaper, the Reaper always shows up, but whenever you do want to see him, he takes forever. It's pretty lenient, generally, how long it takes for the Reaper to show up on any given floor, so I'm going to have to wait quite a while in order to get him to appear. So I will see you back here once the Reaper actually shows up. I have a feeling that death is near. Okay, that's good. <laughs> Not often you say that's a good thing, but that's taking a very, very long time. I think it's been a little over five minutes now. 
Actually, you should probably equip the right persona for this. I think it was Sandalphon who had two auto skills. Kind of want to get those going. Auto Sukukaja, Auto Tarakaja. Yeah, that should be alright. I'll want to immediately switch to Odin, though. Be careful! I sense death! Okay, does that mean the Reaper's actually here? I think that means that he is. Oh, yep, change. He's definitely here. Where are you? Come on, Mr. Reaper. Come on out to play. Where are you? There's usually a dot that's moving. Yep. Okay, I can see you. You're moving. You're moving. There you are. Gotcha. Uh, I think someone got hit first. Uh-oh. Okay, the battle's already started. That's not good. Okay, let's hope I have the right turn order here, because if I... Well, that's pretty lucky. Let's hold off for now. And that was dumb. Oh, great. Okay, there's something that I need to do here. Normally, I don't get the battle starting before I want it to. And there's... Well, at least two of our party members are immune to that. That still hurts an awful lot, though. Okay. Turn order. We have at least two people going before the Reaper. This should hopefully work. Okay. First, I'm going to go ahead and scan. Secondly, I'm going to go and put everyone on standby. This is going to sound weird at first, but there is a reason for this. I don't want to put Akiniko on heal slash support though, just to uh, be a Raha himself. I don't know. I'll try this. Basically, I don't want anyone attacking the Reaper unless I specifically say so. Because otherwise they'll do what Junpei just did. So, plan here. Switch to Odin. Junpei's going next. Okay, so what I need to do is I need to Thunder Rain and then I need to put it on Rush. That is what's worrying about this fight. If you miss with Thunder Rain, things can go south very quickly. So, I guess here's the Reaper's bio. We might actually be dead already, so this might be kind of pointless. But the Reaper has every Dine skill, every Mudine skill. If you use Magic Mirrors, it'll use Mega Dollar on. And it has 4,444 HP. Being a joke on the number 4, being pronounced the same way as death in Japanese. So, yeah, this is going to go very, very badly. It's also pretty smart about targeting weaknesses. It usually goes directly for weaknesses, and if it can't hit a weakness, it will use a break skill. Akiko being down is bad, but we could possibly still do this. The main worry about this fight, though, is you need to make sure that you don't run out of SP. Really? Okay, that's incredibly frustrating. Got lucky at the start of the fight, but not so much now. And Odin has a weakness. Uh, yeah, that's not good. Well, at least the Reaper's being stupid there. So, a better persona for this is Seabily. Seabily can inherit Thunder Rain, but also... Uh, but also does not have any weaknesses. Uh, probably should have got some... Oh, but the wind... Yeah, the wind item that makes you immune to that. Anyway, I'm kind of losing my train of thought here because I keep missing the Thunder Rain. Okay, good, gotcha. Now we can potentially start the stun lock. Hit it! That happens. Now, I think since Koromaru is attacking it next, I should be able to go for an all-out attack here. Have Koromaru hit it, and then I need to relent. Now I need to relent, turn off rush mode, Koromaru waits. The Reaper now wastes its turn getting back up. And recovers from shock. My evasion rate and hit rate was up, and still I missed twice with Thunder Rain. That's not good. So, yeah, this takes quite a while, because the Reaper has a lot of HP. 
But if you do this and hopefully not miss too much, it's... Are you kidding me? I have all the luck when it doesn't matter, but when it does actually matter, this happens. Well, Junpei's dead. And I need to use a Balm of Life now. This has pretty much gone as wrong as it possibly could have gone. You generally want two people going after the Reaper, because then you actually can get an all-out attack in, as you saw earlier in the fight. At this point, I might just cut ahead to if anything interesting happens, because there's really not much else to say here. It's so weird that I'm hitting more often now than I was with Auto Mask and Kukasha. Wait, I'm still in rush mode. I'm dead. You do have to be paying attention here. And we're definitely dead, unless we go into it somehow. Nope! Okay, dead. Yeah. Had a feeling at least one attempt wasn't going to go well. Okay, this time, thank goodness the antique store is open at night and that you can go here and go back to the dorm without using up the night. I'm going to get myself some of these. I just didn't realize that I wouldn't have had any of them. Five of those should be okay. Okay, now I'll see you back at Tartarus. I actually have a bit of a different plan this time. This time, I'm actually going to try bringing Yukari and Igus. The thing is, raw damage output, I've just realized, doesn't really matter that much. What matters is not having weaknesses. And I have lightning gloves to cover the weaknesses of Yukari and Igus. So, that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. Also, I kind of want as much accuracy as possible, but, uh... The toy bow is kind of the best for that, actually. Hmm. I guess I'll just go with that and hope it doesn't backfire on me. But I guess it's going to get lightning gloves, too. Okay. You changed your... Please tell me you changed it to... Uh... Oh, yeah, I did have a fifth number already. Or did I buy that? I'm not sure. Maybe I found that. I'm not sure. Yeah, that's fine. And then Pandemonium's also fine. So gonna equip that on you. And I'm still gonna bring Koromaru for his excellent agility. Oh, should I bring Akihiko? Hmm. Maybe I should... You know, I do kind of like bringing Koromaru for this, actually. And so this time I actually am going to save. Because I... Well, I still have to go through the waiting for the Reaper every time, but... I don't have to go through changing my equipment again, so gonna save now. And I'll see you back here when the Reaper shows up again. Let's see if the Reaper likes smooth jazz. I have a feeling that death is near. Oh. Be careful. I sense death. Well that's weird, she gave the warning twice. Where are you? I hear the chains. Are you here? Yep, there you are. What? The sword didn't even come out for some reason. Okay, right. Um, I'm getting a turn now, and uh, okay, two people going for the Reaper. That's fine. Okay then. Give me a sec. I'll scan the target. The Reaper has a pretty weird hitbox, it seems. So, going straight to Odin, and hopefully not missing too much this time. Okay, also, tactics menu. Everyone on standby. Okay, let's see if we can start this. Okay, that's one hit. I think Koromara is going next, so I actually think we can do this. And well, we've got an all out attack of four minutes now. Still barely any damage. Hit, and we need to relent now. There's the Reaper all shocked and knocked down in the scan. And no turn for you. 
and hopefully I can keep this cycle going. You do have to keep paying attention though, because if you accidentally have Rush on too long, bad things happen. And once again, we repeat the process. So I probably will be cutting ahead because this is kind of boring. Hopefully it stays boring. I guess I should mention one thing. Just a little bit of behind the scenes information. Before I even started recording this playthrough. Fighting the Reaper like this was actually my very first test of recording this game with commentary. You wouldn't have seen the video because I made it unlisted, but yeah, this is this is what I did to test out how this game would look recorded. And just to just test out my commentary on the game in general. So, hopefully that's interesting. Oh no. Speaking of interesting, things are about to get interesting. Uh-oh. Oh, that's bad. Yukari just got one-shotted. Okay, Koromaru goes second. This is really bad. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put Igus on heal support. I understand. Yeah, the problem with this strategy is once you miss with Thunder Rain, things can go south very, very quickly. Are you kidding me? Wow. Well, I guess is immune to that at least. Providing backup. I do like the gunshot sounds the Reaper makes when it uses Myriad Arrows, though. They kind of sound similar to Evokers. Okay, that worked, at least. No all-out attacks for me this time, though. I guess I guess we'll be casting buffs if uh, everyone's at full health, which should be alright actually. Might actually help out. But yeah, this suddenly got a whole lot more annoying. Okay, go Koromaru. I should have probably switched your item. Oh, thank you, I guess. Okay, yeah, she's on heal slash support all the time now. I forgot she had that. Okay. This is still pretty bad, though. I need to rethink my strategy. So, Koromaru knocks it down once. I don't go for the all-out attack. The Reaper gets up. Yukari knocks it down again. Yukari knocks it down again. Okay, actually, wait, she doesn't because it's recovered from shock. So, Yukari can't actually do very much. And then I guess continues with the heal support. Okay, so what should I have Yukari do? I wonder if I should set you wrong button. I wonder if I should set Yukari on just do whatever. Because we know the Reaper will be back up again after Koromaru's turn, so whether or not she attacks is of no consequence. But I kind of would like to get some Garudines in, actually. That was actually very close. I almost kept having the rush, but... It went... Ah! I turned it off! Dang it! Okay, that's at least... Well, I've got a lot of those. Yeah, so this is what I wanted Yukari doing. 
This will at least hopefully add a bit of extra pathetic, but still a bit of extra damage. Okay, this will mean that hopefully we don't miss as much with Thunder Rain. Sorry, I can get a bit tense during this fight. Weird thing is, on my first playthrough, I did this at a much, well not much, but I did this at level 75-ish. I did this much lower than this. Okay, rush on for Koromaru. Turn rush off during the attack animation to make sure that we don't have the rush continuing. Always got to pay attention here. Especially when the turn order changes. This isn't going too badly, though. We also get to hear Baby 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 a lot. Kind of wish it got a different battle theme, but still. I suppose I could actually use this time to... Maybe show off one of these, not special, but the new boss theme from Persona 3 Portable, which I actually really like. I remember for the... F okay, Rush. Turn it off during the animation. Gotta keep concentrating here. I remember I first heard a Persona 3 Portable's boss theme during Persona 4 Arena, during Lapras' story, and I was wondering where the song came from, because I didn't find it on the Persona 4 Arena OST, and then I found out it was actually from Persona 3 Portable, which was pretty cool. Anyway, I might just speed up the battle, I guess, from now on and play that song. Which is something that I've actually always wanted to do ever since I started the game. I always wanted to play that song, which is called Danger Zone. This might help too, actually. Okay, I was about to say we hit another danger point because I'm going to have to recover SP. Okay, thankfully the Reaper wasted this turn by using Fire Break, but this could potentially go badly. I only have one cast of Thunder Rain left, so sooner or later I am going to need to recover SP. I need to recover Igus' SP too, actually. So... It's gonna have to happen sooner or later. Might as well do it now. So, where is my Soma? I mean, what better time to use one than now? So, I kind of just have to pray that it doesn't use... Garudine on Gary Stu now. Well, let's have you hit it at least. Okay, Mamudoon. That could actually be very bad, depending on who dies to this. Okay, that was lucky. If Igus or Yukari got hit by that, I would have had to have messed up the turn order again, so... Who then they didn't? Okay, please tell me that that's... Dang it! I hate it when Igus does this. She's been doing this an awful lot. 
really wish that staff buffs worked the way that they did in later Persona games, where using it a second time would just increase the duration of it, rather than just outright missing anyone who had the buff already. But hopefully, this should bring the stun lock loop back. And we're almost there, too. Don't get cocky, though. That health bar is a little bit deceptive sometimes. The Reaper often has a little bit more health than you usually think. So sometimes when you feel safe not using Thunder Rain, you should have used Thunder Rain anyway. Always safest to continue spamming Thunder Rain. And you see, yeah, now I just have to use that again, just to put it on everyone else. But I really do appreciate her buffs. They are actually being really, really useful in this fight. Because, yeah, that only does about 100 normally. And Koromaru only does about 46-ish. So it increases our damage output from around 200 per turn to... 120 plus 60-ish, that's 180, and then plus Yukari's attack, which does about 60 as well, So yeah, uh, around about 250 per turn, rather than just 200. Every little bit does add up. The health bar is looking pretty low, but like I said, the Reaper's health can be a bit deceptive. That is not a good move, I guess. I want auto muscle with Kaja, please. You're not even attacking! That attack buff is useless on you. Uh. The AI is still working against you, as always. We're close, though. We're very close. Don't want to choke now. Really, really close. Ten thing is it is to go for an all-out attack now. Like I said, the Reaper's health can be very deceptive, and if you go for one and it survives, things can go south very quickly. You've seen how badly things go if you let the Reaper get a single turn. So I just would rather play it safe here. Always best to play it safe against something this powerful. Ooh, yep, see exactly that missed. But you see, imagine how this would have gone if we did not have Spellmaster. Spellmaster is really essential in this fight. If you don't have it, you're likely to have to use two SP recovery items instead of one. And every time you have to recover your SP, it's another chance the Reaper has to kill you. So best to avoid that as much as possible. This could do it if we're lucky. Yes! I made up my mind. I won't lose. Reaper down! And with that, we get the bloody button. 12,000 experience points, and not enough to level up Gary Stu, but is that enough to level up everyone else? 
just Koromaru. That's kind of strange. Well, I guess he was the one who contributed most to that fight. Although, I guess actually was pretty amazing there too. And Yukari... Yukari did well with the wind attack. So, let's get out of here right now. Yes, I'm sure. I don't know if the Reaper can ever show up twice in a single floor. I do know that defeating the Reaper once does not mean he's gone for good. He will be back the next time we go into Tartarus, but... We have beaten him, and that's what matters. Now, get a good look of this area of Tartarus. Something's about to change here, the moment that we turn in this request. For now, though, of course, I'm gonna want to save here. That was still quite a rush, even though I was doing it the cheap way. So, yeah, if you want an even cheaper way to beat the Reaper, there is always Armageddon, but that requires you to be at least level, I think, Halel is 81? So, this lets you do it a lot earlier. I have pulled this off in the low 70s before. It's definitely possible, but you do really need to make sure that Odin or whoever you're using Thunder Rain with, again, Sibylle is generally better for it because she has no weaknesses, but whoever has it, make sure they have Spellmaster. Because if not, Thunder Rain is 32 SP per cast, and that adds up very quickly. Like I said, you'll probably need to recover your SP twice instead of once. And, as I also said, every time you recover SP is another chance the Reaper has to kill you. So, don't do it. Avoid it at all costs. Anyway, with that done, we're going to claim our reward. <laughs>